Hello and welcome to Pass the Turn. This is a new series where I talk about a few different things around Commander. So hopefully there'll be short videos where bite-sized things to talk about and I'd really like to hear what you think in the comments. So today's episode we're going to talk about Commander Etiquette. I'm going to break this down into three segments. It's going to be about mass land destruction, it's going to be about grudges and the last thing is going to be about deck conformity if you want. Uh, how you talk about your deck and what you say about your deck, um, sort of, what its power level is. Anyway, stay tuned and let's see what you think. So, mass land destruction. Taboo, apparently, uh, in some playgroups. Um, in ours, our playgroup has slightly evolved over time and it's a valid win con. Oh, I say win con. What does that mean? That means if you blow up everyone's lands, you should be winning after that. There should be a reason why you're using it. For example, Averson with Obliterate. You essentially wipe the field bar enchantments and Planeswalkers. Now, I know there are a lot of powerful Planeswalkers enchantments, uh, but you essentially wipe the field and then you win from there. It is no different to doing a, uh, let's say, a Mycosynth Lattice into a Vanderblast. You're wiping out everyone's stuff but your own. From that point, you should win the game. And most people will just sweep, which kind of sucks in its own way because I feel like everyone should be allowed to enjoy their deck for what it is. So why it's taboo is uh, there's a bad history of people Armageddon without any reason. They haven't got any board state and they just want Armageddon because it's in their hand. That That's not good commander etiquette. That's not good for games. That's not good for the, the progression of the game. The enjoyment of the game. Because you're stopping people playing magic. If you're going to stop them playing magic, at least end the bloody game so that you can start another game. Again, comes down to win con. That's where I understand why some people get salty about mass land destruction because it's done incorrectly and therefore it's a cycle of uh, people not not enjoying the game because uh, because of mass land destruction essentially that they don't like mass land destruction in their game pod which is fair enough if that's if you're sat with people that play degenerately like that it's the same in my eyes as someone using an infinite combo uh, I find that quite boring uh, way to win the game but then again that's my opinion other people love a combo I'm talking about two card three card combos that's kind of just that can be assembled easily if it's something like uh, a five piece infinite combo that you just stumble across damn that's cool I like that but it's like many pieces of the puzzle coming together but we're getting sidetracked here but essentially it is a similar vein of people don't really like mass land structures people don't really like infinite combos Okay, and also if you don't agree with anything I've said, that's fair enough. This is my opinion, um, and going from what my my pod and my friends have experienced with uh, magic and mass land destruction, feel free to comment and tell me I'm an absolute b-head. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the next subject. Right, now this one is a good one. Grudges. So what do I mean by grudges? I mean someone holding a grudge after they've been destroyed by another player or teamed up against by another couple of players. So when I mean uh, grudges used badly, I'm talking about uh, people that make it their target to destroy person that destroyed them in the previous game at all costs at cost of actually having a good game at the cost of actually having a fair game at the cost of them losing themselves just to take that person out that is something that many of us have done but it's not good uh, commander etiquette and it's not good for the game because actually it takes the experience away from the other people because uh, they don't feel like it was a truly earned win especially let's say uh, Aaron dedicates to kill me knowing that he's going to die from the whiplash from either Ro uh, from Rob or Leo that that you know that's like a heartfelt that's not like not, not not that's like 
it's just not a good way to go really is it um, and people sort of think oh why would you do that and they, they right quite rightly why would you do that this also can be done to bad threat assessment uh, purely because you're glazed with anger and you're a vigilante and you're going to take this person down because god damn it they beat you last game and instead of having a, a good game no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna destroy that person for that obviously wobbly camera because i'm going down a wobbly road also there's a, a difference between having a grudge uh, at the start of a game and assessing which player is actually Nicol Bolas. For example, if you sit, this will lead into my next conversation, but if you sit down at the, at the table and Rob will agree with me, if Rob's playing Godo, or as we like to call him, Rodo, uh, then we know he is going to be the main threat because his deck is far more efficient, far stronger, and it means that he is more likely to be the aim of the target until we have control or some sense of control over uh, not just losing instantly to a Godo Helm-esque sort of um, experience. So holding a grudge isn't necessarily bad, it's how you use it, right? You can keep your saltiness in, you do not need to use that in your next game. We're all guilty of it, we all do it, but it's something that we all as players need to start considering. Is it good for the fairness of the game? Is it good for the quality of the game? Ultimately, the answer is no. So, the next uh, subject is deck power uh, and honesty between players when they sit down about what they're playing. Some people will sit down at the table and say, oh no, my deck's, you know, average power rating and it potentially might not be. Uh, it potentially could be a, an 8 out of 10 in that playgroup. Now, this is something that can in, innocently be made as a mistake because everyone's uh, power scaling is relevant to the group they're in. So someone might say, oh yeah, Josh, you're janky jank jank is an 8 out of 10, but then I sit at another table and my janky jank jank is a clear 5. Uh, so uh, I think it comes down to the ownership of the person to, and the experience they've had with the deck. If it's a new deck, again, different thing, but the experiences they've had with the deck and its win rate and the experiences that it gives to other players to go, right, am I playing the right uh, deck for this playgroup? This also comes down to de deck types. I know we, we, we touched on mass land destruction. You might sit at a table and they absolutely hate mass land destruction. So your questions when you sit at the table are honest. How do you guys feel about mass land destruction? Oh, you don't like that? Okay, I won't play this deck. Another one. How, how do you guys feel about turn three go no helm? Oh, okay, I won't play this deck. It's a very similar way of thinking and you've just got to be thinking about how your, your deck, and it obviously it gives away information, but it's information for the back, for the great good of the game and actually having a fair game. Also within those deck types, you can have things like stacks, which potentially people hate stacks more than they hate land destruction. So if you sit at a table and they're like, oh, I'm playing a stacks deck, you as a player have to be like, okay, people might say no, I don't want to play with you. So then you need to make a decision on whether that is the deck that yeah, I mean, obviously you might enjoy it, but think about how other players play the game and whether they enjoy playing with you, because these, at the end of the day, these are your friends, uh, and if you're constantly making the game boring for them, they're not really going to want to play with you, or at least not with that deck. So when we talk about deck power, deck conformity, we're talking about sitting down at the table and being honest about what you believe your deck to be and the style of deck that you're playing so that you get a fair, honest game uh, and everyone can enjoy it that way. So to round it all up, a little summary is uh, mass land destruction, not really taboo, it's more how it's used. With great power comes great responsibility, absolute cheese ball. Uh, with deck power and conformity, inform your people, inform who you're playing with, ask them if it's okay. It's the same as playing with a custom commander. Ask if it's okay. If they say no, it's a no. Uh, and then the last one, the grudges, the big one. Just think about when you play uh, 
what it, are your actions, uh, you know, making the game better or are they making it worse? Anyway, I hope you enjoy this game and I hope the camera wasn't too wobbly. Uh, it is on the window, but it's just bobbling all around the place. Um, but yes, stay tuned for more Josh and Van content.